<laughs> I actually heard you and um, Immutable Man. Is that his name? Yeah, or this tell came, us on this. This comes from Immutable Man. We were talking about this mm-hmm. in a podcast. That was an interesting yeah. convo. Were you the first guy to interview him? I think um, I, I I do not wish to answer this question. Oh, you can't. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. No, that was a good episode, man. Because didn't a lot of people think you two were the same people for a while? A lot of people thought we were the same person. You know, I've but... actually been getting messages on my Instagram where people will message me on my Instagram, not Twitter, and they'll say, "Are you Life Math Money?" I'll say, "What the heck? No." <laughs> so I've been getting that message where people think me and you are the same people. I'm surprised because we have so many podcasts together. Like it's very easy for people to verify that me and you are not the same person. I would say, I think if you're intelligent, right, it's very easy to verify that me and I am are not the same person because I am is like a much, a much better writer than me in the sense that I'm not talking about content itself. I mean the the prose, right? His writing is more poetic, flowy. I suppose mine is more dry and practical in the sense that my writing is more like the Spartan type style of writing. You know, one sentence paragraphs doesn't bullshit around, doesn't make you put in a lot of brain space to analyze between the lines. You know, this is like, for example, if I'm writing an article on any topic, it's go- you can read it and understand it immediately. It's a very dry and very direct way of writing. Whereas I am's way of writing is much more poetic, much more artistic. Mm, I see. But I think people that think you two are the same people, they don't really think of it in terms of prose. They think of it in terms of ideas. Would you guys say that you guys agree for the most part on big concepts? I would for some part. In fact, I am and I have had so many conversations where we mostly disagree on a lot of things. We learn from each other a lot. Mm -hmm. But I am and I disagree a whole lot, actually. Like every time we speak, it's typically us disagreeing on things and giving our perspectives. And um, sometimes I'm right, sometimes he's right. But I, I would say we disagree a whole lot. But I can see how someone on Twitter would would think that we're in agreement on most aspects. Because you only talk about certain things on Twitter, right? You don't talk about everything on Twitter. It's like a niche, right? Live intentionally, um, health, fitness, money, all of those things. But we're not talking about a bunch of other things that we might disagree with on, for example, IQ and race and things like that. I see. We don't want to get banned from the Twitter. I mean, my take is that it doesn't really matter as much, but a whole bunch of people on the internet disagree. And, you know, it's a, it's a thing apparently. What? That IQ matters a lot? No, so apparently... There's like a big theory where certain races are supposed to be smarter than other races. And, uh, you know, it's like if you are an aborigin, your IQ is like much lower than, say, if you are from Sweden. Uh, personally, I do not buy these studies in the sense I think they were, they're very maliciously done. For example, in India, the IQ studies were conducted on tribals. And then they project it as if this is like the average IQ of India. The average IQ of India, according to Western studies is 82, whereas the average IQ for white people is 100. And that's bullshit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I was listening to that podcast, I did notice you guys disagree a good amount of times. Where on Twitter, I don't think you guys disagree that much, at least publicly. Where on the podcast, I heard you a couple of times say, huh, I actually disagree with that. And you guys have mastered the art of disagreeing without creating an enemy. And I thought that was an interesting part in the conversation where you guys were talking about the difference between arguing with someone and disagreeing respectfully. And that's a skill set, especially something you got to learn in the real world. Because some people, when they disagree, they do it in such a malicious way where they're actually trying to prove that they're right rather than trying to see what is right. So you guys were able to disagree in a very tactful sort of way in that episode. I think it comes down to what your goal is, right? If you want to learn or if you want to win. For example, right? Like if I disagree with you, I can say things like, yeah, but you're like an Indian guy, right? Why do I care about what you think about women? Fuck you. You're an Indian guy. Like you, mm-hmm. you can't get any women. 
And, you know, that's like the, the type of disagreement people have on Twitter. <laughs> right. Like, that's not exactly a disagreement. That's like, fuck you. Your, your opinion is not valid. <laughs> it's like a very low IQ-ish way of behaving. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, your opinion is invalid. You're a sexist. I don't have to consider what you said. I can just ignore it and I feel better about myself. I just am correct your name. because you are sexist. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's literally it, it what really people depends do on, on what your goal is. Go on. That's literally what people do on Twitter. So when you are disagreeing, you want to first understand that you can disagree without creating an enemy. Where a lot of people, they equate disagreeing with disrespect. And if that's your perception, you're always going to come off a little too harsh. But if you're over here disagreeing in a very gentle sort of way, then it can actually bring someone to your side much quicker. And then you also want to think, should I disagree with them? Where I have a po- policy where unless I'm creating content with the person, I'm not really going to disagree with them too much on public. I'm probably not even going to offer much thoughts on it rather than just being like, oh man, this person is wrong and here's why. Unless I'm creating content with them. Where me and you, we disagree a lot in these Unapologetic Truths podcast episodes. But that's because we're creating content together. We know that this isn't personal. It's just us disagreeing on ideas. So you got to be able to disagree in the real world without coming off as an ass. That, and you need to be able to turn down events as well without creating enemies. These are two things that a lot of highly introverted people or adults just haven't figured out. They have this harsh tonality whenever they're disagreeing. They have this disrespectful tone whenever they're saying no to an event. You don't want to do that because it's going to create more tension for your life. So here's the the way to have like a proper conversation with somebody. And you need to have like a you the person you're talking to needs to be above a certain psychological level for this to work. Because you know, you can't it's like you can't play chess with a kid because the kid is just gonna flip over the board, right? So you it, you you have to apply it smartly. But basically, what you want to do is you got to remember that your conversation is so that you can both learn and it's not, you don't get anything if you win, you know, quote unquote, you know, win the argument. Mm -hmm. And you never want to raise your voice and you never want to insult the person. You never want to be like, hey, fuck you because you think this. You always want to stick to facts and logic and see where they take you because that way you can learn a lot. Once you get to the point where you're just like hurling insults or screaming at each other that's where the the benefits of the debate have ended and you're just fighting mm-hmm. and it's not even the fighting the productive type of fighting where you know for example you know you fight like some enemy you get something you know you win and you get to conquer some territory or you fight some guy on the street to take his wallet so you've gotten something this is like a fight where you lose even if you win you lose so it's a dumb waste of time Absolutely. One trick that's helped me is whenever I'm debating someone, there's this tiny thought in the back of my mind that says, Arman, what if you're dead wrong? And simply having that thought tucked in the back of my mind allows me to listen to the other person. Because most people, when they're debating, they're going in with the thought of this person's wrong and here's why I need to destroy them. Or if you insert that tiny thought, Hmm, what if you are completely wrong and this person is trying to save you some embarrassment? That actually makes you listen way better and absorb the points. And it makes you less tense because when you're going in trying to prove that you're right, there's that tenseness to you that the other person can feel. So if you really want to have one of those clashing debates because it's going to lead to more views, ratings, that's one thing. But let's say you're actually trying to understand the topic then you need to humble yourself as well because you you don't know. You really don't know. You may know from a limited scope, but your goal is to find out the topic at hand. So you got to really understand, are you trying to debate and clash and joust or are you trying to understand the topic better? Yeah, sometimes, you know, what you are actually trying to do is, you know, win the argument, for example, on social media, right? They don't actually have, no one has like a proper debate on social media. No one. It's always, you know, some some kind of underhanded way to describe the other person and prove that you're right. So it it really depends on where you are and who you're talking to. Like I said, right, it's like a 
you have to have discernment because if you are acting in good faith with people who are acting in bad faith and you know thinking the things you said you know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong mm-hmm. and the other guy is just like insulting you and you got to fight fire with fire you, you know? got to fight fire with fire then absolutely